Welcome to the Kill Shot MMA podcast. It's UFC 308, Taporia versus Holloway. And fuck it, I'm going to include it. Whitaker versus Hamzat Chemaev is your co main event. I'm Sniper. Joined by Monk this week, he's back. And uh, Monk, people are going to be happy to have you back because I, uh, Sniper, uh, was dog shit last week. I missed a lot of stuff. I, <laughs> I, I was on Michelle Pereira. Um, uh oh. I, I I was all about Robellus Despanier. Oh no. Apparently Austin Lane is a uh, is a uh, Habib or just Robellus. No, is that Spain bad. is terrible. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's that cool. was that was a misread. So uh, yeah, I am glad to have you back. Better fights Appreciate this week. Thirteen fights. Tons of shit to break down. Do me a favor. Everybody, even though yes, I missed a week, it happens. Still, smash the like button for share with your friends. At least to tell people about this guy, Monk, who drops all kinds of great DraftKings statistics. I'll throw in some color. It's also easier to bounce back and forth and say some more ridiculous shit. So hopefully, the entertainment yeah. value will go up this week. Before we dig in the card, though, after you hit the like button, check those links down below. Make sure you're in DFS Army for MMA, NBA, starting NFL. All the good shit is down below. Cheat sheets optimizers, go and check that out. Appreciate everyone who does. Okay, with that being said, Monk, I think it's time we did. Let's let's not fuck around this week. Let's, let's dive not. right into the card because the quicker we break down fights, the quicker that uh, we can uh, get away further away from last week. Exactly. <laughs> and we're starting off with a fucking a weird weird fight. Ibo Aslan taking on Rafael Cerqueta. I don't even know if I said that guy's name, uh, name right. You want to know why? I don't really know. Because you can't fucking find tape on him. He fought, and I can go I can go in. So, um, by the way, if you're somebody who likes the handicap fights, uh, in terms of you like the, the, the tape stuff, I run the tape index over MMA Play 365 with our guy Newsom, right? So I'm the guy behind the scenes finding tape on everybody. It's how I watch tape. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, he fought at a promotion called Demo Fight. They have all their fights on, uh, like on their YouTube. But all of his have been pulled down. Oh, Jesus. So that promotion, he worked at that promotion and pulled all the shit down. There's like one fight available, and it's a quick one. So, you know. Or he knew the promoter. He knows the promoter somehow. Because because you know they're just set to private. You know uh, Mick Maynard's not signing this guy without seeing everything. Like, they're out there. They're just hidden. And it's fucking bullshit. So, sorry. Rant aside, he's taking on Ibo Aslan. Uh, Aslan is minus. Well, wow, is open at minus 150, and everyone's betting up the guy you can't find tape on. Cool, <laughs> minus 120 for Sequeta right now. Aslan is plus 100. A pick him at other sites, so pretty much has gone to a pick him. Your DraftKings salaries here Aslan is 8,200, Sequeta is 8,000. Fight ends inside the distance. Yeah, it's a big one, boys and girls. Um, let's see, it is. Minus 145 to be under one and a half rounds. Minus 600 fight ends inside the distance. So we are expecting to see a finish here. Uh, Sequeira, it's, it's fights finish after finish after finish. Pretty much can crushing, though. So, Monk, I know I jumped right into this into this card without too much of an intro. Welcome back. And then I went on my rant about the tape index. How are you this week, and what the fuck are we doing with this fight? I'm sure you got tons of stats to drop on this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Back in town, which is nice. Uh, it did frost over up there one night, and I refused. I said, I'm not scraping this goddamn window, and I didn't. That's for sure. I'm a Texas boy now. We don't do that anymore. Um, but I was. it was a harsh reminder when I got in the rental and there was a snow brush on the seat for a second. I was like, what the fuck is that thing? But anyways, yeah, uh, this is going to finish. So play both sides. I mean, Ebo beat Anton Turkali, my uh, my uh, arch nemesis. Um, and that's the only <laughs> UFC fight he had. He took him, you know, 11 and a half round or 11 and a half rounds, 11 and a half minutes. He scored 85 points. They're almost six and a half strikes a minute and a knockdown, but did uh, absolutely nothing uh, from a grappling perspective. So I wouldn't expect to see that here either. And if he's not knocking out... Uh, Rafael with two F's um, in the first round, early second with a ton of volume. I don't know that he's going to score very well. Uh, the salaries luckily aren't too high. Uh, Rafael is, you know, the most expensive dog, but I think he's got a decent chance. He was supposed to fight on the Dana White Contender Series three different times, 
all the times were canceled. So yeah, I agree. Somebody knows something, but these guys are both can crushers. So I'll have a little of both. I might even pick the dog outright because I they're they're both pretty much debutantes at this point. Yeah, I uh, I'm I'm gonna lean a little bit. See, I don't know if I'd call Aslan a can crusher because at least it's got a couple of UFC wins. Are they super high quality UFC wins? No, but but they're UFC wins, kind of the guy at the same level that uh, as, as Sequera is in my mind. Uh, you know, I I I think he's a little bit better. Don't take a stand on this in cash games. It is a load up in GPP spot. I don't think this fight gets mm-hmm. out of the first round. Fuck it, honestly. The mid range salary. I prefer um, Aslan for the re- for really. It's hard to really break down Sequera because you haven't seen much. But he moves forward. He's violent. I think Aslan will be able to get takedowns. I, I, I honestly, you can probably take him down. Either guy stands to get a knockout in a firefight. It's hard to have a high degree of confidence in this one. But I'll go with the guy who's been in fucking UFC. And that, based on the, odd, the odds value, I think people will play a little bit less of him. So it's a load up in GPP fight and move on about your day. Fucking weird one. Yeah. Hopefully, if it doesn't it's early, neither one's going to score well, most likely. Yeah, just just hopefully it's violent. Uh, yeah. An- we're starting with another. Then we go right to another really fucking weird one. No shit. Ishmael Nordiev taking on Bruno Ferreira. What's it? It was Bruno Silva here, right? This is Bruno Ferreira. Bruno no, Bruno, Bruno Silva. Silva. Oh, Bruno Ferreira is later. Yeah. Bruno's on this fucking card <laughs> against Bruno Silva. Nordiev is minus one seventy. I don't know why, but we'll get to. That. I don't. Okay, I don't either. Bruno Silva is plus one forty five. DraftKings salaries on this one. Uh, Nordiev is eighty three hundred. Bruno Silva is seventy nine hundred. Fight goes to decision. Sorry, fight ends the distance minus one seventy. So it's a good one to target for GPPs as well. There will be some stinkers along the way, but we're starting off. With two pretty good fights to target. Um, Nordiev has been away from the UFC for four years, three or four years, right? Yeah, um, he, he lost to Brady February 2020. So four and a half. Yeah. So uh, you think, okay, he's earned a spot back. Yeah, he's been doing well. No, he's four and three in Brave. He's been knocked out twice. But but he's back. Why are we bringing him back? Do we know? I, I don't fucking know. I guess he's got nudie pictures of somebody. Um, <laughs> I, this was this might have been a short was this a short notice deal? I I, I don't even really remember. Apology Let's see. Here. Let's see. Uh, yeah. No, it doesn't. They're not. They're not listed on the list. Th- there's plenty of short notice on this card. So I just assumed. No, it's, it's yeah. We lost I, Nurmagomedov a few days ago. Well, we he's gonna get a he's gonna get some warm body to knock out. I was wondering, of course, because I erased well, him from this yeah. week already. So they, they said they're gonna try and get uh, Sayed Nurmagomedov. Who, by the way, if you're looking on DraftKings, he's there. He's listed. Fight got pulled. He may get a new opponent, maybe Uber Chalk. But if he gets a new opponent, just play him because he's gonna fucking uh, guillotine him in like less than a minute. So yeah, it'll be. Ugly. I don't care who it is. <laughs> so the reason, by the way, I mean, I'm kind of speaking facetiously. I know why people aren't at Silva because he lost to Chris Weidman. That was the sure. fight in Atlantic City, and Weidman, I get, is old. It's worth noting that um, if you go back and watch that fight. Uh, Bruno Silva was poked in the eye about five fucking times. True. He was losing before that, but yeah, was, that was bad. He, he could not see anything the entire time. Did you hear like, what he I, said about him? He's like, I can't stand Chris Weidman and fuck Daniel Cormier. Both of them are terrible, like unprofessional. <laughs> so, And then before that, he lost to Shara, to Shara Bullet on this card, but he got takedowns, and he lost to Brendan Allen. He loses to guys who are good grapplers. And Alex Pereira, that doesn't count. No. It just does not count. But he lost to GM3. He beat Brad uh, Tavares, lost to Brendan Allen. He's a good guy. He lost to Shaw. He got some takedowns, but outstruck. And Chris Weidman's a good striker, right? And for what it's worth, he beat Andrew Sanchez. Andrew Sanchez took him down seven times, but he knocked him out late. Regardless. So that's why. Ishmael Nordiev is not very good. He's, he, he's got a loss. His win, his UFC wins are Michelle Pregeris. And CR Bahadur Zada. Yeah, he lost to Sean Brady. Okay. He also lost to something called a chance Ren counter. <laughs> like, that's just the wiki capping. Silva can get takedowns in this fight. And Nordiev has been knocked out twice in Brave. You're telling me Silva's not as good as those guys? Is Silva a little bit aged? Sure. I think everyone's going to flock to Nordiev because, oh, he's back in the UFC. Those fights aren't going to be on, on, the, um, on his game log. You're gonna you're gonna see you know what he did years and years ago. 
Silvas are going to be there. Look, I'm on the Bruno Silva side. I just don't believe in Nordia. But I'm going to play a little bit in GPPs. Sure. I mean, I'm not telling you I'm super confident Silva's going to win. I'm super confident this fight shouldn't be plus 145. That does not feel right to me. So I'm going to lean towards Silva. Go ahead and play both sides in GPPs. Uh, but I'm definitely going to get some leverage on Silva. Monk, how about for you? Yeah, I actually completely agree. Uh, he's too expensive to be a kill shot, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm... Silva should just be better. Like I, I mean, I'm just could restate what you said. He's getting older. He's looked terrible. He's one and four in his last five, but he should at least be able to win moments. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll play a little bit of Nardia. Like you said, just in case he gets takedowns. I mean, he did land five in the UFC. He was also taken down nine times there. Um, we probably won't be seeing much of that from Silva, but I mean, Nardia didn't like break the bank with his scores back in the day. I mean, whatever against Sayari he put up 98. And against uh, Prezeras, he put up 80. So we're not really doing much. Silva, I mean, he got completely shut down by Weidman. Even before the Ipokes, dude only scored 12 points in uh, in 12 minutes. Not a good average. Uh, and then Brendan Allen, he scored less than nine. I know that was a first-round sub, but, uh, yeah, I should. I mean, not not great. He put also, 61 Brendan against Brendan Allen, Charles. Chris Weidman, Ishmael yeah, Mordiev. Right. Uh, he put up <laughs> Which 61. one of these things doesn't belong? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He put up 61 against Shara, which I cannot wait to talk about that fight later. But, uh, yeah, I agree. I like Silva. I'll have more of him. He's also cheaper. So um, there we go. Love it. Right, let's move on. You better disagree with me soon, though, because based on last week, who Yeah, All right. right. Uh, by the way, this fight, Renat's got a new opponent. He's not taking on Themba Grimbo because Themba fought last week, two weeks ago. forget what it was. Recently. Hey, Nico Price, right? So instead, we got Renat Fah- Fakradinov. Taking on Carlos Leal. Fakradinov, minus 255. Comeback on Carlos Leal is plus 215. Your DraftKings salary, Renat, is 8,900. Leal is 7,300. Uh, Leal, by the way, yes, making his UFC debut, but he's fought in LFA. I think he was in... Um, oh, he's... Um, Leal... He's 16 and 2, I believe, correct as a pro? Make sure I'm picking the right guy. Like uh no, it says it's he's 21 and 5. Oh, 21 and 5. 21 and 5. Who am I thinking of 16 and 2? Maybe I'm thinking the the most recent run. There there is yeah, he point is, PFL, he's been around LFA, PFL Bellator. Yeah, PFL Bellator has been around forever. He's the guy I was gonna say for my b- breakdown, but now since I hesitated before I kick it over again, I do know about Carlos Lee. I was making sure I was thinking of the right person. Carlos Leal, since I think it's 2014, in the last 10 years, he's got two losses, and both are to Sadabusi, who, if you know, if you watch MMA in general, that's not someone to fuck around with. Is he going to be a UFC champion? No, but he is a terrifying striker. Uh, before I go into my full breakdown, though, Monk, you are first for this fight. Yeah, I'm on the dog here, to be honest, and I'm a, Fak- I'm a Fakradinov fan. Like, I like this dude. I want to see him do well, um, but he did not look great if he cannot land takedowns, did he? Against Zaleski, um, there were there were pieces against Dalby where he didn't look the best. Um, ended up with five takedowns there, but Zaleski didn't look good. Um, I mean, battle, I guess he, uh, yeah, landed seven. He didn't land any against Kevin Lee because that was over immediately. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like Leal here. I like the experience. He beat uh, David Zawada, formerly in the UFC, and he beat Ray Cooper the third back in 20, uh, 2022, if I could speak. So, yeah, I really like him. Um, supposedly, he has very good takedown defense, which is what you need to beat Renat Fakradinov, and that's what we're going for here. I think the salary savings could be tremendous this week, like even better than uh, – smotherman last week i wish i would have been on the show for that one i was on yeah i I, I got that one wrong i'm a a jake hadley hater for the most part so it could have gone either way but yeah i i think uh the value is very possible here to be 10 11 12 x in a win um and if he stuffs takedowns fakradinov's gonna get tired and leal might put it on him so of course i will have some fakradinov in case everything i said is not true and he does land takedowns because he is a rinse and repeat guy Five and a half points a minute over his last five. 117 is what he's averaging per win. So I'll definitely have some Fakradinov. But man, that Zaleski fight, I was, uh, we'll just say, less than impressed. And uh, I'm a bit more impressed with the potential of Leal at this price tag. 
Is Ilya Allison or Leo? what I get for watching fights on mute. I don't know. I'm just, I probably said it both ways in that. I yeah. just, um, agree to disagree. I was asking for a disagreement. We got one. Here we go. I don't think, agree that Fak Redoff needs takedowns. Needs it. I think he gets them. I don't think Leal can, or Leo, Leal. Now I got, whatever. I don't think Carlos, I don't think our boy Carlos will be able to stop him. If he does, he is better on the feet. He will hurt and probably finish or not. I just think he ends up on his back uh, most of the fight and Renat scores well. That being said, spell it out. Great fight to target for DFS. They both have clear paths to victory yeah. that both score really, really well. Love this fight for DFS. I think Fakradinov gets the takedowns and puts up a big old fat number. Love it. We only had a, we only had like three fighters over a hundred last week. Fluffy should count for two, but man, it was it was a uh, sparse scoring. Yeah, it was it was a rough week. Yeah, the fluff down. All right, we got Farid Basharat taking on Victor Hugo. Basharat's minus six hundred. Hugo is plus four twenty five. Your DraftKings salaries on this one. Basharat is ninety six hundred. Not the most expensive fighter on the card since they posted the. In Juku Barnett salaries this morning, um, but still pretty expensive. Your comeback on Victor Hugo is 6,600. Fight goes to decision, which is going to be the concern for everybody here. It's minus 190. Pretty straightforward breakdown for me, anyway. Victor Hugo is a good prospect. Farid Bashra is a better one. Not the Bashra brothers are unbeatable, we've already seen them lose. Um, but I think well, he's better than Hugo on the feet. He's fine grappling. I think he's slightly better on the feet. He looks to grapple, mix it up, does a little bit of everything. 9,600 is just a big old fat fucking price tag. Um, and that's my real concern here. I don't know how great he's going to score. I think he's a little bit better everywhere. Because of that goes to decision line, I'm fine if you want to play Victor Hugo in um, in cash games. I think he's got a decent floor. Mm -hmm. Um Problem with Bashra is I'd rather play Ankalaev, Neil, or Andruku. That's the problem. How much of him can really fit? Do think he's better everywhere. Think he wins. And I'll I'll sprinkle I'll sprinkle in Victor Hugo in case uh Bashra shits himself. But it's when I say sprinkle, I'm talking like five to seven percent. I'm not gonna X him out of my player pool, but I'm gonna be limiting him pretty severely. Um Monk, how about for you? Well, we'll rebound off our, our disagreement, and I'll completely agree here. I mean, everything you said, uh, lame. I love. I know, super lame. I think Basharat's better. He is the one uh, Basharat that is still undefeated. He's he's looked great. Um, the only thing I was going to add, but I don't need to, but I'll say it anyways because that's kind of what I'm supposed to do. I like Nchukwu better. Like you said, I would rather have Ankalaev. I'm questionable on Jeff Neal, and we'll get to that one. Um, but yeah, there's, there's guys that I like more than Freed Basharat. Yeah. He went off on Cledson Rodriguez, finishing him, finishing him in the, uh, fourth minute, fifth minute, I should say. But other than that, 82 against Blackshear, 87 against Lopulus. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I would pair that with the minus 190 to go to decision. Basharat's going to need a finish to get it done. And I'll let that beat me if that happens this week. Cause I'll have more in Chukwu, probably more uncle. I have too, but Hugo, like you said, uh, a decent little cash punt. All right. Let's move on. Let's get away from this love fest. It's fucking boring. <laughs> now let's talk about I Kennedy. We're going to disagree here. <laughs> and Juku and Chris Barnett. And Juku, minus 700 now. Chris Barnett, plus 500. Uh, salaries. And Juku, most expensive fighter on the card, 9,700. Barnett is 6,500. Under one and a half rounds, minus 150. Got to play it in GPPs. Monk, I, I, I really wanted to play Chris Barnett. Please give us a reason to. Tell us t tell us no. what, what, why we got to play him. I cannot. You you have to play him in case you want to you want to manifest the front flip, the three-quarters front flip, because that's what I'm trying to do. But, I mean, realistically here, like Chris Barnett was supposed to fight. You know, he's on a two-year layoff, was supposed to fight Junior Tafa, now he's fighting Kennedy and Chukwu, who say what you want against, you know, the, losing to OSP. This dude is not Justin uh, or Junior Tafa, I should say. So, yeah, I'm expecting and Chukwu. All, he, all this dude has to do is literally come out, land one takedown, throw it, you'll land it, and then just ground and pound this dude to, to TKO victory. So I'm I'm going to be playing a shitload of Nchukwu. I think he's great in GPPs. Uh, 
I think he's probably fine in cash. I'll even say that it is risky because he's so expensive. But no, I'm with you. Yeah. This is a first round finish. This is a possible first minute finish. Chris Barnett is also 38 years old. Don't let you know the top knot fool you. It is covering up a bigger bald spot than what I have. But uh, yeah, I want to see the front flip. I don't think it's going to happen. Kennedy's a smash spot, man. I, I probably. I mean, I'll have what if you said five to seven of Hugo, I'll have less than that of Chris Barnett. I really wanted every reason to play Chris Barnett. I'm like, when Juke was coming up from light heavyweight, maybe he won't have the that's true power. Yeah. yeah. No, he's gonna be faster. He hits plenty he's hard. Huge. He can get takedowns. There's an eight Dodge. inch height. <laughs> what is it? A nine inch reach advantage. I, I wanted Andy's to play, southpaw. I wanted to play Chris Barnett, okay? I wanted to. Can't do it. Agree with agree with Monk here. Play him everywhere. I play him in cash games if you can. Yep. I mean, if you're gonna pay up, this is this is the spot to go to. The African Savage is gonna do something savage. Maybe yeah. Chris. Hopefully, Chris Barnett doesn't look as rough as as he did after his last win. Yeah. It's not. Just play him, and don't play Barnett. It, it's. If Barnett I know it's a breakdown you, podcast, man, he, but let's just beat. save everybody a little bit of time here. Yeah. Because we got to talk about Bruno Ferrer. Here he is against Abu Magomedov. Abus. Abu. Abus. Uh, channel my Sean Strickland. What's an Abus? What's an Abus? Magomedov is the favorite. Minus 133. Plus 113 is the comeback on Bruno Ferreira. DraftKings salaries for this one. Magomedov, 8,400. Bruno Ferreira, 7,800. Fight. Goes sorry, fight ends of the distance is minus 350. We're gonna get into a stretch here where there's not t- fights to target both sides of. Um, mm-hmm. this is one of those fight weeks where you load up early because it's lower level stuff with finishes, and as the fights get better, the scoring typically goes down except for the main event. Does not yes. apply to the main <laughs> event, that does not apply. We'll get there, <laughs> but mostly you're playing early and then the main event. Uh, mm-hmm. for GPPs, I think that's the best strategy this week. Uh, in terms of this fight, I am on the underdog. Look, Abuz is more technical, and Ferreira is more violent. I, I, I don't think Abuz is going to be able to hold up in a firefight. Now, it's it's one of those, it's not a super strong take. By the way, I don't know if I said the salaries. Abuz was 8400 Bruno Ferreira, 7,800. It's another mid-range salary fight. Relative toss-up fight. But I'm going to play the dog, who I think is better off in these type of firefights. Bruno Ferreira doesn't see second rounds. Like, there's just... Mm -hmm. We're going to see violence. Play both sides. I'm going to lean on Ferreira. Not an all-in fight, because there's... The main event is an all-in fight. Um, The opening fight, I think, is probably a little bit better in terms of upside than this one, but not much. And then... You got to fit in your Kennedy and Drew Cruz. And I don't think you can all in this fight. I just don't think there's enough spots to go around, but it's yet a shit ton of it in. Get, if you're not playing 65% of this fight, you're doing something wrong in GPPs. And if you're building 10 lineups, yeah, it's about right. Six to seven. If you're building three lineups. This should be in all of them and, and make it fucking work. Uh, and I'm on the Bruno side. Monk, I for you. I agree with the the amount that you should play, but I'm going to take the uh, other side here. I'm going to take Abus. Yeah. Um, I think his ownership is going to be lower than it should be. Uh, I think the losses Fair. there against Strickland and and Bahio, those dudes are are fucking good. Like Strickland, say what you want about him, the dude is a, a fantastic striker, and he dropped almost nine strikes a minute on uh, Abus for just under ten minutes before he finished him. Kyle Bahio, huge fan of the fighting nerds, me personally. Uh, with John John Matsumoto last week was awesome. Um, but yeah, and he, so he's only beaten Warley Alves, which probably a lot of new fans don't even know who the hell that is uh, in his Ghost last of three. Warley so, Alves. Yeah, exactly. So, and that went, I, I just think Magomedov uh, is probably better and exactly what you said. What happens if this actually does get out of the first round? Bruno's not going to stand a freaking chance and Abus is not going to stop. So if he can weather the storm early, which is what he's going to have to do to win, uh, I think he has a great shot at uh, at beating Bruno Fajeda. You know, throw some leg kicks in there as well to help slow this guy down because his nickname is the Hulk. And unlike Ian Kutalaba these days, this dude is the freaking Hulk. So, yeah, um, it's going to be tough. If I'm going to play both sides for that reason. 
but I'll be heavier on Magomedov here, especially because the salaries are close. Yep. I, I again, I don't have a strong enough lean where I can. I can really yeah, fight exactly. You on that I would one. not be surprised if if it went the other way and Bruno knocked him the hell out. <laughs> All right, I, I have a strong lean on the next one, but I'm going to try and just introduce the fight and kick it to you and not give it away. All right, we got Miktebek Orlebay taking on Mateusz Rebeski. Orlebay, minus 310. Rebeski, plus 260. Fight ends inside the distance, minus 140, about 50-50. And your DraftKings salaries for this one. Orlebay, towards the top, he is 9,100. Rebeski is 7,100. Monk, who you got? Man, I'm, I'm, I'll try not to cop out here. I'm going to play both sides, and I think there's tremendous value opportunity on Mateusz Rebeski because he can grapple. He knows how to grapple. Ural Smedic does not really grapple very well. He's more of a striker, at least in on the statistics and in my mind when I think of his fights. Uh, Els Brenner a little bit more, but he's more of like a too tough for your own good type guy. Um, both times Oral by scored a ton of points on, on those two, but Rumbeshki, he's also scoring a ton of points on uh, not great competition. Probably not quite as good. Uh, Roosevelt Roberts, Radzibov and Nick Fior took that L to Diego Fajeta, which is why he is so cheap guys, even in the loss, which he did get finished in like with 15 seconds left or something like that. He scored almost 57 points there, so almost for a minute. I think the winner scores extremely well. I honestly think we should not be writing off Mateusz from Beshki, so I'm going to be playing him for sure, especially at the price. But I will have some of Oral by as well, so I'm kind of on um, both sides of the fence. But honestly, I'm man for DraftKings. I'm definitely leaning from Beshki. When you read my notes that hopefully I'll have out tomorrow. It might say my pick is oral buy, but my breakdown, it will say I'll be higher on Rumbeshki. And I it will be it will be significant ownership. Orla by core play. There you go. I, 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 I swear you were going the other way. No, I am so we are we are on the opposite side of this one. You're I more you're more uh uh confident than I am. I'll be having both sides, but I, I like your oral by. I want to hear what it is. And and I just shit on I picked Brenner against or Orlebay. I mm -hmm. was about Ellis Brenner. I totally uh, that performance impressed me. I think that's a strong win. The strength of schedule is is a real like a real concern. Remember, Diego for uh, for Harris, the same age I am. <laughs> He's been around a long time. Rebeshki's got 33% takedown defense. That's He's taken true. down by Nick Fiore. Yeah, he beat Roosevelt Roberts, Loic Radzibov, Nick Fiore, and something called a Rodrigo Ludio. <laughs> oh, cool. I think this is a real, real problem. I think Orlebi is a legit prospect. Um, is Rebeshki... I, I don't think Rebeshki's a real step up from Elvis Brenner. You put Brenner and Rebeshki together, I pick Brenner. No, you're probably right. So... I, in this situation, on Orlebi looked great in that fight. I, I maybe I'm getting sucked in by recency bias for whatever it's worth, but you have to at some point watch the tape. And he looked that good. I watched some more. I was high on Brenner. I'm still not all the way high on Brenner. I think I just yeah underestimated how good Orlebi is. And I just I need to see it from Rebeshki. Now, granted, I said the same thing about Cameron Smotherman last week, and I looked fucking foolish. But I am. Um, I think Orlevi gets takedowns, can maintain top position, do a better job than uh, Diego Ferreira did. I think Orlevi smothers him, scores a big ass fucking number. And Orlevi, I think, has got. I mean, this, this top range here, our, our, our 9,000 and up, right? Mm -hmm. We have five fighters Kennedy and Julko, who we just talked about, Farid Bashara, Magomed Ankalaev, Jeff Neal, Mikdebek, Orlevi. Um. I have a you real can make an hard... argument for a second. Yeah, I have a real hard time really wanting to play him a lot more than Ankalaev or Neil or Farid. In fact, I don't think I can do it. And, and it's a $600 thing, price difference. Last thing I'll say there, and we'll get to this fight later, if you're big on Max Holloway or maybe stacking in cash, then you'll have room for Oral Buy. So, yeah, there'll be significant ownership there for me too. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about that one. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm on the Oral Buy pretty, side pretty strong here. Uh, sounds like Monk's toying with a Rebeshki kill shot. I don't agree, but I sucked dicks last week, so <laughs> <laughs> ah. we'll see what happens. I'll be interested to see what the ownership projections are deep as army. Yeah, for sure. 
Make sure you hop in the Discord down below. Get in there. Check out the ownerships. That brings us to the featured prelim of the evening. Jeff Neal against, apparently, Rafael Dos Anjos just doesn't age. Nope. Apparently, just doesn't age. Um, Jeff Neal is minus 300. The comeback on RDA is plus 250. Your fight goes to decision prop is minus 160, and it takes a hit on the DraftKings. This is about where the card kind of turns to where a few fights in a row that are good name value. I remember a lot of times those name value fights don't typically score. Fantastic. Um, Neil is 9,200. RDA is 7,000. I will say of those, probably, just because I keep saying it, I, I want to be clear. So we got Neil coming up. This fight is better for DFS than any of the next three that are on the main card. It's better than Shara Petrosian, Ankaliyev Brakic, Lerone Murphy, Danny Gay. I Probably agree. right. The only one I might question is Uncle Ive if he gets a finish, but if he doesn't, then absolutely. Yeah, but I think Rockage slows shit down. Rockage, Rockage fights are not at a fr- frenetic pace, and Uncle Ive no. is more than happy to, to lay back and feel each other out for, for a round. I mean, he's Rockage is not going to charge at him like fucking um, uh, the Hulk. Elon, Elon did twice. <laughs> like, he's, this is just not going to happen. Anyway, Neil and RDA. Uh, Neil needs to be able to keep this fight on the feet. He just he just does, and I think he does. RDA has got a path to victory, sure, um, but I think Neil's size, his takedown defense is is, is decent. I just I, I don't see it happening here for RDA. I want to pick him. Is he a live dog? Sure, I'm gonna mix him in. This is one like last fight. You're gonna mix in Rebeshki. I'm gonna mix in more on on the RDA side. But I think Neil's size and power is enough here and gets him the W. How about you? Yeah, I probably agree. I want to pick RDA so bad. We share right, a birthday. Your, heart, your heart's in it. You're like, I want to. I am. Well, we share a birthday, right? And he's fighting on his birthday, and I'll be watching the card on my birthday. So, your birthday? happy yeah, birthday. On Saturday. You old, Thank you. old fuck. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and it's worrisome that this is at 170. RDA is, you know, if the 165 division existed or 160 or whatever you want to call it, he would have been right up there for many years. But this in-between shit, he never does well, especially lately at welterweight, uh, which is concerning. If he can't get takedowns, like you said, it's probably going to be Jeff Neal. The only reason I'm playing him is because you said live dog, which I agree with. But if this does go to decision, RDA could score okay for his salary, which is what seven k, I think you said. Uh, uh, yeah, seven k. Seven k. It's ninety two seven thousand. Uh, ninety two and seven thousand. Oh, okay. I'm right. pretty sure, unless I have it in wrong, um, which is possible. No, I no, no you're <laughs> right. You're right. I fucked up. So yeah, I'm. I'm like you said, the top five nine k guys. Neil's probably down on my list. I don't see him finishing RDA uh, at a big uh, percentage of the time. So. I'm going to probably be punting a little bit with RDA if I need to. Maybe throw him in, mix him into some GPPs. Jeff Neal, I'm not too, too interested in. But then again, uh, you know, he beat Luke A third round and absolutely smashed him 120 points there. But that was right after he beat Ponzinibbio and scored 64 points. Also, if you remember, Luke A was, was that before the brain bleed or after? I don't remember exactly, but there was something going on with his brain there. Yeah, so. I don't remember. Take that with what that was right around that time for sure. So take that with a grain of salt. I'm gonna be pretty low on this, but uh, I like RDA. Maybe I'll maybe I'll fucking pick him for my kill shot. Who knows? Yeah, I, I think if you like RDA, if you like RDA to win, you gotta play him because yeah, that salary, the way he fights, I think it's gonna score decent. Yeah. All right, let's move on. It's main card time. Shara Bullet. Ner- uh, I almost called Ner- 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 made off. Oof. Maga made off. <laughs> Take it on Armin Petrosian. Shara Bullet, minus 147. Come back on Petrosian, plus 127. Fight goes to decision, minus 215. Two strikers who are going to not expect it to finish. That's that, that spell's not fun for DFS anyway. Interesting fight, just DFS-wise. Shouldn't be good. Uh, 8,600 for Shara Bullet, 7,600 for Armin Petrosian. Monk, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to continue to slander Shara, Bull, uh, Shara Magomedov here. I just, I don't, 
this yeah cool he looked great throwing all kinds of spinning shit and elbows and jumping knees against nina fucking drama while he was also terrifying her uh at the same time yeah he looked good doing that sure but then what does he do when he gets in the cage he fights you know bruno silva looks okay then and i talked about this last time antonio trocoli was a ghost for the last 80 percent of that fight and this dude could barely finish him scored 93 points Michael Oleksiejczyk doesn't get out of the first round. This dude scored 74 points in a decision. All he does is strike. He gets taken down. He doesn't do any kind of grappling whatsoever, and that is not going to score well. Yeah, he's cheap because I guess they're on it this week, which kind of pisses me off because I was hoping to get Armin at a much cheaper price, like 7300 Oh, my God. 7300 would have been fantastic because I am on Petrosi, and there's no way, and if this fight beats me, it beats me. There's no way I'm playing Shara. I'm going extremely low on Shara. Maybe uh, some in G. I'm not playing, not touching him in cash. Uh, maybe I'll have some Petrosian if I need somebody in that range. Um, but I think he's a bit too expensive to just jam in your lineups. But yeah, long story chor- short, I will continue to uh, slander Shara Magomedov. And actually, it's not slander if he doesn't fucking prove me wrong. So yeah, I don't like this dude for DraftKings. I'm going to pick Armin straight up and I'll play him over Shara. I think Shara wins. I think he's the better striker, but Petrosian's the one who shot and landed a takedown before. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm going to lean towards Shara on the feet. That's how everything kind of lines up here. I don't think Petrosian's not good enough to sway my opinion. Sure. Don't want to play much in draft on DraftKings, and I'll probably play more Petrosian because he's a, a dog pricing. He's the one right. more likely to get a takedown. He's the one, one, really the only upside to get on the optimal here. So while I'm picking Shara, uh, Petrosian is the better DFS play and you kind of just move on from there. And it's not a strong pick. I just, I see them staying on the feet. I, I rate Shara's striking a little bit more than, um, you do, but it, it's not enough for him. I'm going to get all hot and bothered. Like, uh, you are he, you, uh, okay. Over <laughs> he there? Might, he might be know? my new, he might be my new, uh, Anton Turkali. We'll see. If he scores 75 points in a decision here. Yeah. This dude, Shara pleasure bullets. Yeah, <laughs> made up. He might find you if, if we say that. I don't know. I'm sure Pleasure Bullet. You know, there's got to be there's there has to be a vibrator named Pleasure Bullet that needs oh, to sponsor us. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. Uh, the Kill Shot MMA podcast brought to you by Pleasure Bullet. <laughs> Click the link down below. And get your lady a Pleasure Bullet while you watch the fights. Day is right around the corner. <laughs> Want to watch fights? Give her a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you got Shara's. I mean, I can't say anything about a lazy eye because I got one too, but his like in weird ass eyes looking in the camera. <laughs> right. You want fight? Give her vibrator. Yeah. Well, her her. The other reason this is the, he can't fight anywhere else. He always has to fight in Abu Dhabi because no one in America would clear him because of his one eye. That always has to be mentioned. Just yeah. saying. Can you imagine if he goes up the rankings and he can't ever fight in America? Dude, like what who's gonna clear him? What state? Well, I know Bisbing fought in China once. Didn't he fight in China against Kelvin Gastelum that one yeah, time? I think so. <laughs> but Bisbing at least was like okay with hiding it, apparently, or they were just dumb. Shara, well, like you, this, Shara can't hide it. No, exactly. So, so yeah. That was a weird tangent, but you know what? I think we needed that because now we got <laughs> Magomed and Goliath and Alexander Rakic. Hey, all those people who were yelling that um Ankalaev should have got the title shot against um Pereira instead of uh, Roundtree. Where, uh, yeah. Where I, I can't hear you. Speak up. <laughs> because that was a great fight. Fight of the year contender. Not going to win. Easy. Better fight. But contender. Great fight. Um, and I'm not excited to watch Magomed and Goliath fight. I'm just not. Just as excited about watching Bilal Muhammad fight ever. I don't care that he's champion. <laughs> I don't care if he's getting like who fucking cares. He is boring, boring. Bo- like I, I'd, I'd rather go watch Alice Ardeline's only fans than a Bilal <laughs> Muhammad fight. Anyway, and, see, I found a way to trash Muhammad. Anyway, exactly. Ankalaev is minus three sixty. Rakic is plus two eighty five. Your fight goes to decision. Light heavyweights favored to go to decision. Yeah, you getting any red flags yet? It's minus one forty five. Uh, your DraftKings salaries for this one. We got Ankalaev's at 9,400. Yeah, pony up. 
Rakic is 6,800. Who's first for this one? I don't even remember. I think I, am I, I think you are. I think I started by slandering. Cool. Oh, that's right. Oh. Um, I came really close to picking Alexander Rakic. I really did. He's a good striker. Ankle, ankle, I can't deny Ankle Live that much. Ankle Live's good on the feed. He can mix it up. Just don't put him in a triangle with 20 seconds left, and he won't, you know. He won't. <laughs> no, he, in all seriousness, he is, he's a solid fighter. Absolutely solid. And not that he shouldn't get a title fight at some point. Just, I didn't think it was that big of a snub, personally. Right. Um, it's, it's fights, his fights are okay. I think he's better everywhere, but I think what I wrote, I wrote something along the lines of he's better than Rocket everywhere, but not by a lot in any area of the game, my opinion. Got a, got better name value, a little bit better striker, a little bit better grappler, can control him, doesn't really press for a finish. Rocket is good. Any get on any given night, I think Rocket could be Ankalaev. I don't think we're talking he's going to get outclassed here, but I think Ankalaev stays at range, uses you know a little bit better um, tools at range. And gets a decision when it's not very exciting. He doesn't score well either. Um, name value. I'm thinking these guys might go over owned. My leverage play on this fight is going to be to go pretty severely underweight and pray Ankle Life doesn't make me look stupid. Will be the first and or last time. But I pick Ankle Life, but I am not going to play much. And I'll probably end up with like a little more rockage than Chris Barnett, but not a ton. Like a, you have primary dog plays, secondary yeah. pro, dog plays, and he's like, a top level tertiary dog play. I'll have like <laughs> seven to ten percent of rockage ish. Uh, what do you got, Monk? Yeah, I agree. Um, Uncle I have decision is the pick here. The biggest stat here, I mean, Uncle I have, like you said, probably better everywhere by a little bit, but his defense is uh definitely better as well. These two guys allow the least amount of points to their opponents when they lose on the entire card, and it is by a wide margin. Uh, when Ankalaev loses or has lost 68 points is what he gives up. Rakic is at 77.5. The only thing that other thing that sticks out to me is four of Rakic or three of Rakic's four losses are, um, you know, two of them KO TKOs and one of them was a sub. So three of out of the four are finishes. I tend to think this one goes to decision though. And I'm uh, not too, too excited to play this one for DK. In fact, I agree with you. I'll be severely underweight to both sides. Let's move on to Lerone Murphy and 50K Dan Ige. Murphy, minus 260. Ige, plus 220. Fight goes to decision, minus 275. Again, two strikers who are going to, like, great name value fight. Want to watch the fight. DFS, another story, boys and girls. Um, Lerone Murphy's 8,900 also. Ige is 7,300. Monk, you are first for this one. I tend to agree. I think people are going to see that this is the widest line fight to finish or to not finish inside the distance, rather, to go to decision. And they're going to look at, you know, all the times these guys have gone to decision and they'll say, well, Murphy's probably going to win anyway, so it's going to be by decision. And no one's going to play him. I'm probably not going to play too, too much Ige, to be completely honest. But how do you ignore Lerone Murphy? And yes, it was, I know it was five rounds, but this dude scored almost nine, uh, actually five points a minute, almost nine strikes a minute against Barbosa. So he's probably not going to score 155 in a decision win. But I think there's a chance that he could break 100 here uh, with a good performance against Ige. He was at 97 against Kulibau in that decision. He keeps raising his performances with every single fight because he's a dog shit scorer before the last couple of fights. He's raising his performances. The names are getting better and better. Dan Ige, yes, is probably up, is going to be up there and tough to uh, tough to do, tough to get it done against, I should say. But I think the potential's there, and I'll be playing. I want to see the ownerships on Murphy. I think they're going to be low. If they're 20%, I'm going 30, 35. They'll definitely be in that range. Um, I don't know. For me, it's, it's hard to get my head around a lot of Laurel Murphy. Especially, and I look granted, but if I hadn't seen the Edson Barboza fight, there's no way I would be picking him in this spot. Exactly, I, that was a clinic, it was a great performance. Put him on the map, opened everybody's eyes, mine included. Danny is a tough motherfucker, and I, I don't, 
I don't know the volume is going to be. I don't think the volume is going to be the same. I don't think we're going to get. You know, obviously, not to think we're definitely we're not getting five rounds of action that that inflates your scoring and numbers quite yeah. a bit here. Barboza, by the way, is aging rapidly. Like that, that is worth noting. Um, there's just other places I want to go on the card, and without inside that, that goes to the decision line. I kind of want to play Dan Ige. Uh, I think he's a viable cash punt at 7,300. I like him more than Rebeshki and RDA. He's probably my favorite cash cash punt on the card. Honestly, I'm looking. Who, who else you want to punt with in cash games? Well. Yeah, he's he's probably the move down there. Um along obviously with um Holloway as your dog in cash games. RDA but, for but, me, but yeah. We'll get there. Um yeah, you can go RDA. The problem is RDA can get knocked out by Jeff Neal. Mm-hmm. I don't think Laurel Murphy's gonna knock out Dan Ige, so I got I got a little bit better of a floor there. Depends how aggressive you want to get and how much you like RDA. Ige, you know, got points for surviving against Diego Lopez. Mm-hmm. Good, but you get points for surviving. That's the, it's the Darren Elkins effect. Remember, <laughs> just because you're getting beat, but you're not, you know, you're doing something cool doesn't mean you're great. Dan Ige is a good fighter. Laurel Murphy, though, he's going to be the pick. I think he's cleaner on the feet, more tools, a little bit better movement as well is what I think is going to be the real difference in this fight. I'm just down on the DK scoring. Ige is actually the better DK side for me. All right, co main event time. Yes. Boys and girls, we got to talk about Bobby Knuckles. Fine, I'll call him the Reaper. Robert Whitaker taking on Hamzat Shemaev. God, I hate Hamzat. <laughs> God, I hate this motherfucker. Um, yeah, but uh, Shemaev is minus 240. Whitaker is plus 207. Fight ends inside the distance is minus 550. You apparently need to be playing this one. I, I, I'll make a case where you don't need to slam this one. Like it's a decent exposure fight, but I, I don't think it's it's all in there. There are some paths here. Um, your DraftKings salaries for this one are: Chimaev is eighty seven hundred, Whitaker is seventy five hundred. I already forget who, who who went. Who I think you're up. I think it's on you. No, it's, it's on, on me. You. Okay, cool. <laughs> It's on me because uh, maybe I let my bias get the best of me. I'm I'm picking Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker is in there twice against Uel Romero. I don't care what you say. Uel Romero better takedowns than Hamza Chumayev. And I don't. I know I trashed on, on Muhammad earlier and I got Hamza Chumayev. It's not anything to do with race religion. I don't like Bala Muhammad because of trying to do this Colby thing that just but not as good. And he's boring. And I don't like Chimaev for things like you fake a glove touch at Kevin Holland and shoot at his legs. That was like the last. That was I fucking hate that shit. I I just really do. He also that bullshit with him on the scales where he missed weight and is like laughing and flipping. You know when they have to move that whole card around and <laughs> everybody's DFS lineups up because nothing up was down, left was right, purple was a rainbow. It was fucking wild. And he's like laughing, like, fuck you. And he, oh, by the way, this fight's up at 185. I've heard rumors that he's not having a good cut. Can you imagine if this motherfucker misses 185? <laughs> it, it really would. I think he's talking, I'll go to 170 if they offer me a title fight. Please miss right. 85. Please miss 85. It'd be fucking hilarious. All right. That being said, and on top of that, He's got all this hype. I've never seen somebody with a 7-0 UFC record with as many holes and question marks as I currently have about Hamza Chimaev, bias and me hating his personality aside. Were you really impressed with the win against Kamar Usman, whose knees I don't think work anymore? I think there's like... Mm, and that was a majority decision win. Cool. Gilbert Burns, he got into a firefight with him. Yeah, I know Gilbert Burns is Gilbert Burns, but I don't know. I didn't think that was a great performance. It was a fun fight. Same thing. And then he's got, you know, he's got the wins over uh, the Leech and Reese McKee and John Phillips and GM3. Like, you know, Kevin Holland should be fighting at, at, at 70. 
I don't know if Hamzat should. He really is right. In, in all fairness, Hamzat is right between weight classes. Mm. It'd be funny if he fucking misses 85. That would really, it really would be. Um, look, Robert Whitaker has got 82% takedown defense. Yeah, he got outstruck by Israel Adesanya. Cool. All right. You know, put a clinic on Ikram Aliskarov, beat up Paulo Costa. He's lost to Adesanya and Drikas. Okay, Hamza, we're going to find out. My concern with Whitaker is he's got a lot of wear on the tires at this point. He's got a lot of UFC fights. He is He's not super old. He's, what, 34? But he's fight old. He is mm. really fight old. I'm a little worried that comes into play here. But this day and age, with all those great supplements everybody's on, I'm going to go ahead and pick him to pull the upset here. You know, People were counting him out against Paulo Costa because – he just lost to Drikas and you know he's beat. He's got good wins. When Janar Kadenier was a beast, Kelvin Gastelum, Marvin Vittori, Paolo Costa, Ikram Aliskara. Let's find out about Hamzat. And like I said, I have questions about Hamzat. Personality aside, I will say this is a fight, while it's not an all in fight, if it just takes Hamzat a little bit to get going. Not gonna score great. There's a lot of other great fights on this card to target. Whitaker and a win would be striking based. Plenty of people score higher than Whitaker and wins on this card. So it is not an all in fight, even though I am going to pick um, Robert Whitaker and ownership aside. And the fact that, um, and I can't pick Whitaker as a kill shot because I, I think even in a win, he, he may not win you with GPP. So I am on the Whitaker side. All those caveats included. That is my pick for this one. Monk, you were nodding along. How crazy am I? I don't think you're too crazy, um, but I'm going to be on the other side, I think. And I might look foolish. What? I might look (laughs) foolish here, but I might look foolish. I think the Burns and Usman wins are are pretty good, especially when you consider who he was fighting basically before that. That Usman win, I don't know. I I, we, if if I knew that, yeah, his knees looked bad, but if I knew that they were completely shot, like he, didn't, he wasn't Kevin Lee in there, right? So, and Hamzat is he wasn't Kevin. Lee. It was not Kevin. Those dudes' knees are shot. Um, I don't know, man. If, if Whitaker gets taken down and ground and pounded, he's gonna have a problem. Probably when he gets when he gets when he starts to get beat up. He does not generally recover well, so that He's is not a, a bit, good nail. You're saying, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not really. I don't know, man. He he gives up points too. When he does lose, he gives up like 97 points per win on average, which doesn't sound like a lot. But Hamzat's not 9700. He's 8700. He's the cheapest he's ever been, even against Kamaru Usman uh, with those knees there. So I don't know. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to go with Hamzat here. He's fighting at home, basically, for the most part. Um, Whitaker's got, I don't know how long he's been over there. Yeah, he looked good against Costa, who hasn't looked great. His style's completely changed since he came into the UFC. Yeah, he looked good against Ikram Alaskarov, but we don't even know where that guy yeah. really ranks in, in the uh, in the he contest. Was pushed too hard, so, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to take chances. I'm going to go with uh, Chimaev here. I think he has potential to be the better DraftKings play. And if Whitaker wins, it's probably a decision. And I don't think he uh, he scored 68 against Costa. He scored 65 against Vittori. If it's a decision, there's no evidence that to me, like you said, that he's going to score well. So I'll have a bit more Chemayev this week. Ilya Teporia, Max Holloway, main event for the UFC featherweight championship. Taporia, minus 235. Holloway, you get plus 200 right now. Fight end to the distance is minus 160 because Taporia is violent. Max, usually a volume king, as we all know. Uh, your DraftKings salaries for this one. Taporia is 8,800. Holloway is 7,400. Monk, I won't step on your toes. Break down this fantastic main event. Yeah, it is fantastic. You're going to have to play both sides. Two extremely prolific scores uh, in wins. I mean, Ilya's averaging 101, Max 104 in five-round fights. 
Ilya put up 126 and Max is averaging just under 124. Uh, Ilya obviously with no losses. And when Max has lost in a five round fight, he's given up 103, almost 104 and 100 overall in his, uh, in his career, no matter the round. So minus 160 ITD. I don't think you can lose here. I think there's an argument to be made that uh, Ilya finishes Holloway. I think Ilya is the real fucking deal, man. This guy is scary. What he did to Volk, insane. What he did to Bryce Mitchell, what he did to Jai Herbert, I think he murdered that guy. Uh, they had to like bring him back with some, some, some voodoo or something. I don't know what that was, but he scores well when he wins. It's violent. You all know what Holloway is. He's put up like the best DraftKings score in the past I don't even know how many years. I don't think anyone's topped the 209 that he put up, and he's consistent with it uh, for the most part. So lately it has been a little bit lower against Arnold Allen, against Chan Sung Jung, uh, stuff like that. But if this goes all five, I think the stack is definitely in play. The only problem is one of these guys could finish the other. My lean is Topuria getting the finish a little more likely than Holloway does. So I'll have a bit more Topuria. What are the salaries here? 8,800. So you're paying up for it. If you want to stack it in cash, I'm fine with it because honestly, I mean, I think what are the odds for the knockout here? Let me, let, let me, uh, let me just check something real quick. Wins inside the distance for Topuria is minus 105, 450 for uh, Max Holloway, according to Bet Online. So that's why I will have more uh, Topuria. I think he gets to finish more often. But if this goes to decision, you damn well better want probably the stack going on in cash. So I love this fight. I cannot wait to see it. It's a perfect way to uh, cap off what it'll be like. Dude, after this, you can do whatever you want on Saturday. It'll be like 5, 6 p.m. It's going to be fantastic. So I think, gun to my head, I'm picking Topuria. I'll have more of him rostered. But the stack is definitely viable in cash. I need, I need everybody to listen to me very carefully. This fight is in every single one of your lineups, yeah. 100%. Do not, I, I'm not getting cute with it. It's, it's in all your fucking lineups, all of them. Stack it in cash games. All right, now that we've gotten through that, I'm on Ilya Taporia too. I, 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 I can't get crazy. Look, Max is great. Max is fun. Ilya is violent. Mix and takedowns. You know, Max can get taken down. He gets usually gets right back up, but Ilya mixes it well. More, I think, at the power, wow. similar to Holloway Poria years ago. Like Ilya hits different. Now He's again, another level. It's 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 fine margins. Holloway's obviously world class. I just think Taporia's a little better, but it's one of those. It's close enough where if Holloway's having a great night and Taporia's a little off. Max Holloway is going to do some hilarious things in there again mm -hmm. so it's a close fight it isn't all of my lineups i'm probably thinking 65 35 right now on the on the on the deporia side that's about where i lean but feel free to shift that around as aggressive or conservative as you like you want to go 50 50 because you like holloway a little more you really want to get crazy and go 60 40 holloway sure i don't think i'd get skewed more than you want to get real aggressive deporia 80 20 is like the most like that's like i love deporia mm -hmm. i guess you can go 100 if you're a psychopath but i would probably like that's probably where i would limit that i'm on the deporia side for all of those reasons all right we broke down all 13 fights but we're not done yet don't go anywhere let me change our view here we got to do kill shots if you're don't know what a kill shot is first of all welcome to the show hit the like button share with your friends and it is an under-owned play on DraftKings can help you win a tournament. Typically an underdog, although I think there's a case for a couple of favorites this week who are going to be like, no one's going to own them. Mm, that you can kind of make that case. We typically try and limit salaries, but it's not a hard, fast rule if you want to throw something crazy out there. Like, for example, if you want to tell me this week that... Who's the good example? Because I was thinking it as, as we pass it. Oh, you want to tell me like... Shara Magomedov or Ishmael Nordiev is your kill shot. I, I'd, I'd probably let that slide because they're not <laughs> going to be high owned. Uh, but typically it's an underdog. Both have one of them. Pretty good record overall, Monk. Um, what do you got this week? Well, I was going to pick the birthday boy, RDA, but after looking more into it, I said how much I liked Carlos Leal, Leal, 
Uh, we're going to go with that this week. It's super risky uh, for obvious reasons, but that's what we're going to go with. And Carlos Leal, get the debutante, 7,300. He could look, you know, if in a win, he could score, you know, 90, 112, 13X. So let's go with uh, Leal for the uh, the kill shot this week. Yeah, I had, I had a hard time here because mm-hmm. I picked a couple dogs, but they're really in the mid-range, and they're kind of in chalky-ish GPP type of fights like it's I, i'm not gonna use rebeshki I, I i guess if you're gonna make me hang my hat on one of the underdogs it would probably i probably would go rda mm-hmm. i think it's got the upside there but i'm picking jeff neil to win it, it's a weird spot because a lot of my underdog is are gonna be holloway a little bit of whitaker mixed in and then these mid-range fights that we've been talking about in terms of um, Aslan and Sequera, Bruno Silva. You know, can I go Bruno? He's 7,900. I, I give me Bruno Silva. I think everybody likes Nordiev. And it, you know what? It's Bruno Silva. And if you want to hold my feet to the fire, hey, you can't fucking do that. He's too, <laughs> he's too expensive. It's not close enough. Then sign me up for RDA. But. Right now, my show, my show, my rules. I like, I like Bruno Silva a bunch. I don't think anybody's going to play him after the Chris Weidman fight. I just don't. Yeah. So I think you're right. I'll, I'll be on the, I'll be over on Bruno Silva, and that'll be the kill shot. Monk, you got anything before you get out of here for UFC 308? Well, no, I'm looking forward to this one, uh, big time. This whole entire card, I'm really looking forward to. It's a 9 a.m. card, Central Time. 10 for you boys on the East Coast. It's freaking perfect. I love Abu Dhabi cards. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I don't like this. I, I, I don't can't like get this. enough. Well, full disclosure, I am uh, working for a couple hours on my birthday, and that's all I'm going to do is just watch fights. It's going to be great. So I get don't feel bad for me. I'm getting paid, and I get to watch fights. It's going to be fantastic. So I mean, I'm I looking gotta, forward gotta to run that. Around. We got kids. You got to run around to, to this practice yeah. and this rehearsal. I'll get some in the afternoon, but uh, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be up at one thirty either. So I know I'm splitting hairs right. here, but but to me the part like I like I go do what I got to do in the morning. Fight starts at like eight o'clock. The main card starts at eight. Which by the way, just why the UFC, based on the West Coast, why they do it the way they do it because it's yeah seven o'clock their time. So I I fucking get it. But that would be it's a little you know if you make me choose between super late and early. I would prefer the early ones and I'll just rewatch mm. the prelims later. So I don't want to sound like I'm complaining too much. I just, <laughs> it's, it's going to be hard watch, you know, being at, being at a rehearsal and being like, right. What's going on over here on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was out loud. <laughs> so that being said, guys, make sure you do pay attention to that start time. Nothing else for you. Click all them links. I'll see you boys in the discord. Good luck in those contests. Let's cash these lineups. Helmets up. We'll see you next time.